Hey everybody, and welcome to the Final Fantasy Tactics Coliseum AI Tournament League for February. We're getting down to the wire with only 12 teams remaining, all of whom will be playing tonight. I'm Sardak, alone in the booth for the night, and I'm really hungry, so let's get going, because I want to make dinner. Can't do that till we're finished, though. Up first for tonight... Winner's Match Mirror, Kajata 2 vs. Kajata 1, El Escarabajos vs. Pay It Forward. For Kajata 2, we have... Pablo McCartney, the Time Mage, with Item, Throw Item, Arrow Guard, and Equip Shield. Juan Lennon, the Priest, with Draw Out, Hamido, Equip Armor, and Move Plus One. Jorge Harrison, the Lancer, with Basic Skill, Dragon Spirit, Jump Plus Two, and Move Plus Two. And Gringo Star, the Ninja, with Steel, MP Switch, Two Swords, and Move Plus Three. On the other side, for Pay It Forward, we have 55 Burgers, the Time Mage, with... <sighs> Precision, Hamido, Deadshot, and Equip Gun. 55 Fries, the Geomancer, with Elemental, Throw, Arrow Guard, Concentrate, and Move Plus 2. 55 Tacos, the Engineer, with Item, Throw Item, HP Restore, and Equip Armor. And 55 Pies, the Samurais, with White Magic, Auto Potion, Magic Attack Up, and Move Plus 1. Large 40, starting us off. Kajata 2 in blue, Kajata 1 in purple. <sighs> Super long range shuriken starting off against the ninja. Before the Kiyomori gets down, both teams of course getting full hastes. Kiyomori's now up and ninja coming out with deadly poison. Revenge kill. <clears throat> Lancer moves up. Engineer brings the Geomancer back instead of going for a lethal shot. <clears throat> Holy Strike from the Samurai is guarded. And Ambrosia tops her back off. Ninja no longer in danger. Temporal Strike 267 slows down the Lancer and does a bunch of damage. But looks like it's going to be getting a haste two back from the Priest. Another Deadly Poison. Down goes the Time Mage. Crit on the second one, probably having been necessary to that. Samurai guarded by the ninja once more, that arrow guard really paying dividends. No, I guess it wasn't a haste to re-up, it was just a rejuve. The shuriken thrown at the ninja cured up by an Ambrosia. <sighs> Geo goes back down. Pay it forward, just all sorts of on the back foot here. Holy strike for 18%, that wasn't hitting. Pablo charging up a slow on the back line. Time Mage is slowed. Only 96 shot. <laughs> Nightshade, and down goes the Samurai. Got 
discarded from the Time Mage once more. That's a bonk, down goes the Samurai. She'll be back with Phoenix down, but probably not for long. Ninja drops. <laughs> Ninja drops the Time Age once more. Time Age takes out the Samurai, and it is just that Engineer left. And his haste is gone. Phoenix down for the Time Mage, probably not going to do it. Now subject to a jump, and now it is just a matter of the Time Mage, and gravity will do just that. Kajada 2 easily takes game one. Opening haste too, so the thief not getting ahead of itself with an early attack. Time Age sure is, though. El Escarabajos has the full set of uh, haste pro shell, but unfortunately, play it forward elected not to do that. Jump's going to take out the Time Mage before she ever gets a chance to haste anyone. Kiyomori happening super late. Time Mage is down. And thus begins the steady decline of Pay It Forward. Engineer is weakened. Gravity only hits the Engineer. What a sequence of jumps, wow. Looks like a big cure coming out for the Ninja. And an Ambrosia for the Engineer. Chiri takes out the ninja. But that's a big jump coming out of the Lancer as well. And Ninja just comes right back up with a Phoenix down. And is there to take the precast rejuve. Samurai, however, survives the jump entirely because of the rejuve hitting first. And the ninja goes down to the big shuriken again anyways. Another big jump from the Lancer. And another rejuve coming out of the priest. But timed too early, down goes the ninja once more. But Lancer gets a kill. Lancer on the Engineer this time. Time Age continuing the sandbag loop with the Ninja. <laughs> Down goes the Engineer. Geo takes the Ninja back out. Geo's, of course, being excellent anti-sandbags. Samurai has a second Cheery. Is it another kill? Sure is. Lancer finds a bead on her. 
is going to be just a Geomancer left. But it walks in and takes the redirected Rejuve and is back in the fight. One ninety eight Shuriken. Gonna be getting a rejuve. When will the timings line up? Will the Lancer get an easy jump or will it just be a bunch of basic attacks? One ninety eight Shuriken. Down goes the Geo. There it is. LS Carabajos takes it 2 0. Pay it forward, goes down to the loser's bracket. Up next, we have Simmon versus Warped Edge 1. Play Tack versus Big Damage. Alright, for Playtac, Playtac.com. Play the Samurai with Steel, Dragon Spirit, Concentrate, and Sniper. Tack the Squire with Steel, Hamido, Two Swords for Double Flame Whip and Secret Hunt. Dot the Squire with Steel, Counter, Defense Up, and Equip Gun. And Calm the Black Chocobo with Choco Ball. On the other side, for big damage, we have Richard the Spellblade. Basic skill HP Restore, Attack Up, and Guts. He has been doing some enormous damage. Chloe the Samurai with Item, Weapon Guard, Magic Attack Up, and Move Plus One. Nita the Time Mage with White Magic, Amido, Deadshot, and Equip Gun. And Leon the Bone Snatch with Dem I2. Going to Large 50. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Have a good trip? Uh, as good as it could be, considering what I had to get done. Fair enough. Chocobo is going to be able to fly over. That might get him out of position a little. Yeah, that's the unfortunate thing with the uh, black chocobo on this map, is it's not uncommon that uh, they decide, hmm, I'm just going to fly over this and go out for blood. Although it looks but, like uh, it's splitting the team, so they'll be two and two. Could play to their advantage. Wow, what a line. One eighty draining poison on the long range time mage, and Chocobo comes back down to finish her off with a Choco Ball. Knife Hand takes the Chocobo to near fatal. And a Phoenix Sound brings the last team member up. It is a four on four, each with one in near fatal. But importantly, that Spellblade is not the one in near fatal. So as soon as he gets in range, he is going to dumpster someone. <laughs> he sure is. Demi-2 only on one target, oddly enough. 
But hey, it killed and it hit, so. Not sure why I chose that target, but it worked. Phoenix down once again. That's going to slowly wear that samurai out as she's caught in that sandbag loop. Here comes the lightning stab. No weaken proc, but some solid damage. And he survives the nightshade. It's like a dead being charged on the samurai. And Time Age gets herself back up with a flash heal. Come on, skeleton. You've made it this far. I believe in you. Wish for the chocobo. Choco Kirin retreat. And... Full team is back up. Samurai runs away and uh, puts down this. Oh, it does not put down this. But oh, never mind. There he goes. One guts, but not two. And not immediately and no revenged death. with death. Kiku for Kiku a near fatal. One. And life brings the spellblade back up. Samurai Natural. defies pain, but I think this Choco is about to get a turn and come up and uh, put that Spellblade right back down. Another 39%. He might put them down first. Ooh, just barely, and then here comes the Chocobo and the Chocoball. 20% to dodge. Choco Bowl. Doesn't get it. Oh, well, gets a Mito, but uh, obviously there's a castle in the way. Death lands! Don't see that that often. And the no, gunshot lands as well. This turned around fast. Wow, they just three one, next. two, yeah. three kills. 27% to end the match. Amito it again. Doesn't get it. If you were to keep that samurai up. He says, fine, I'll do it the manual way. Fine, I'll do it the hard way, I guess. Finally doesn't get a uh, immediate. I don't know if it has the range. Like, that might be more than eight because of the range bonus on height. Might be. It was Samurai against the world, but that wasn't enough for round one. Warped Edge, winning game one. Whoops. For all the talks about skeletons being traps, this is a skeleton that has made it pretty late into this tournament. Yeah, no, that's honestly impressive he's made it this far. That weaken on the Spellblade is huge, because that Spellblade does a lot of the team's damage. Yeah. Speaking of a lot of damage, 242 to the Time Mage. Not quite enough to put her down, but not far. Kiyomori finally coming down. <clears throat> Flash heal for her is a full heal. That would have been a disastrous Ooh. steel heart, but For no sure. dice. 52, but does get the ice boat brought. So ends up dealing quite a bit more. Weakens the time mage. That's uh probably not going to matter too much. Demi 2 coming out. Dodge. He really likes to target it on only one. 
Actually, how did he even target that on just him? Yeah, that's what I was so confused about in the last one. It was three people, and he killed the middle one. Does Demi 2 have no vertical tolerance, and because of the height from float, it's preventing it? That's possible. Because that's the only thing I can think of. Because in both times, the other target that would have been hit would have been the floating square. Unless, yeah, I guess the only other option is he just chose to target the unit directly for some reason, but that's really odd for the AI to choose to do that. See the time mage brought critical. Knife hand on the choke poke puts him down. Spellblade comes to follow it up with his lightning stab. Doesn't quite put him down, but gets the weakened proc, so that squire's not going to be doing much. Oh, well, actually, he's going to be uh, kissing the floor. Time Mage, Time Mage throws out a cure on herself and gets her ally as well. <laughs> oh, gets Hamidoed. It is Vertical Tolerance 1. I think that float only gives you one height, so I think that should have hit them. I'd have to look again. Maybe he was on the stair. Actually, he was on the stairs, I think. Well, no, because he would have had to target the square. Oh, well. Who knows on this one? Whatever. If it keeps being a problem, we'll look into it. Oh, I already looked into it and solved it, but... Um, do you mean, does the squire over there named Dot have stealth? Um... The squire on the right side does have stealth. He has the dot, dot, dot. Ah. And Warped Edge takes it 2-0. Playtack goes to the loser's bracket. And also, just a quick adjustment here. Now Demi has an effect area. Because it did not previously. It's just nobody is, noticed. Uh... <laughs> makes the fact that Skeleton has made it this far more impressive. I have the wait. judges go out and tell him, Did you, I guess you forgot, but Demi and Demi 2 can hit multiple targets. They can. Huh? All right, and again, Warped Edge, this time with no damage, versus Breaks Operation Meteor. For Operation Meteor, we have Duo Maxwell, the Time Mage, with Draw Out, Catch, Equip Shield, and Guts. Chang Mufei, the Red Dragon, with Fire Breath. Troll Barton, the Paladin, with Draw Out, Distribute, Defense Up, and Move Plus Two. And Hero Yui, the Grenade, with Triple Flame. On the other side, for no damage, we have Richard the Knight, with Chaos Blade. Basic Skill Hamido Lucky, and Move HP Up. Leon the Priest with Draw Out, HP Restore, Move MP Up, and Equip Sword. Nita the Dancer with Snipe, Arrow Guard, Equip Armor, and Magic Defend Up. And Chloe the Ninja with Snipe, Weapon Guard, Concentrate, and Move Plus Two. Going to Large 71. May I state, because I've been having to play uh, Catch Up due to being busy. Mustard. My severe disappointment that Operation Meteor has no red chocobo. Unfortunately, it is a Gundam reference. Fair enough, but still. It does have a red monster, though. Yeah. And a Time Age, which used to have Meteor. Masamune on three. I believe they Kiyomori'd already. Uh, 
Masamune catches two. Dragon with an opening dash misses. Misses. Oh, immediate chaos blade prop. Goodbye, dragon. Oh, that's not what you want to see ha happen immediately when you get hit. I mean, I guess you don't need damage if you just delete them from the game. Change the memory card, no opponents. Win by default. Ninja having none of that gets right out of there. There is not currently anything that gives crystal immunity. There used to be. There's one thing. Skeleton. That's it. Oh, yeah, right. They're immune to crystal and nothing else. Well, by I mean no one else is immune to crystal in any way. Equipment, anything. Actually, are mimes immune to being crystal? Uh, no. Okay, I was curious since I knew they were immune to all negative status effects, but wasn't sure where crystal fell on that. Uh, they are not immune to crystal and dead. Being immune to negative status effects is more of a uh, convention than anything else. True. Like, there's no slider or checkbox that says uh, negative this or positive. making some choices right now. I think he just wants to look at the Time Mage and intimidate the fuck out of them. The Time Mage was in direct view line of what happened to that dragon. <coughs> Gets the confusion on the Paladin. And on the bomb. Who uh, immediately self-destructs! And guts is through it. Guts is through it, heals, and dealt no damage to his ally because they were fire immune, but broke the confusion. That was one of the more unique self-destructs I've ever seen. It's not that he's fire immune because uh, self-destruct is not fire damage. It's that the bomb had taken no damage, so... And... Oh, true, so it dealt no damage except to itself. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really curious what the knight's doing right now. Oh, there he goes. What I'm guessing here is that there's... Can you open up oh, the priorities oh, on the knight? Oh, he has a shield on the knight? Yeah, one sec. That is... What, two? Yep. Uh, they're in standard. Just completely vanilla standard? Uh, the only thing changed, I think, was Berserk a little bit was lowered. I'll double check. Hold on. What's don't move at? Uh, don't move's at negative 39. And Crystal is still 192. Yep. The Cause... only thing, Berserk was lowered slightly, and that's it. Because, like, the thing I've been noticing is that he's been refusing to attack people who have negative status effects, presumably because he doesn't want to break them. Or, like, doesn't want to remove it, and Crystal removes it, so... That's really funny. <laughs> like, that, that's a, that makes sense, but is a wild interaction. Yeah, because it's happened multiple times throughout this tournament where he'll just, like, stand and stare at somebody with a low-impact status effect and then attack them, like, just before it wears off. 
And when you're attacking somebody like when it wears off before their next turn, it's the routine that's saying, okay, we're allowed to break this now. Because you see that a lot with like breaking confuses or charms just barely early. See a triple flame come down at the night. It lands. T Only not even near seven. fatal after double hit. Knights are beefy. It's also that Platina helm that uh, is paying off right now. Having oh. the fire damage outright. Oh yeah, big time. That was one of the items I thought was going to be pretty useful this uh, turning, since I knew some people were running flame whips. And uh, bombs are still good. That knight heals so much. <laughs> hey, when you got 480 HP. Move and HP up and regen. And regen. Paladin thinks that's a good idea and does the same. No Hamido there. Ooh, triple flame aimed it too. No. Hits zero. Feels bad. Here comes a nameless. How many does this get? We get a slow on one. It's pretty which, impactful uh, slow. Yeah, for sure, considering that's the uh, Masamuna. He's going to go Masamuna again immediately, but it's going to take him a minute to get there. <laughs> the knight and the time age just staring deeply into each other's eyes. Ooh, catches the priest this time and deletes him. Speaking of deleting, there it is! I know you said that, like, so you could play it up if you got it when it happened, but nice. And an immediate confusion. Two more to go, like Break said. Thank. I don't think you're going to be able to purify that Chaos Blade, my friend. Oh, wow. Rip Bomb. Was that like a Dancer Smack? It was a Dancer Headshot. Ah, Dancer Headshot. Okay. I didn't catch that she had charged Headshot on it. Undead, Redead, same thing. Of course dead works on undead. They're just undead and you remove the un. Not this time. Down to a lone paladin. Who's gonna try and shine his way to victory. Gets herself a crystal, so it'll be a while before he can get to her. Purifies his poison and then grabs his own crystal. I hate to inform you, Paladin. Oh! Wow! Grenade actually gets up. I mean, it is 50-50. Yeah, it just feels like it never happens. Then, uh, that's honestly pretty big, because he has the chance to put that dancer down. No proc there. Uh, you... That was a choice. Was he still confused and the shine broke it when it self-damaged? I... maybe? I don't think he was, though. I mean, he was definitely don't move, so that was his only yeah, way to, to get the damage at that range. Yeah, it was just, that was a choice. Oh, and there he goes. 
Game one, two, no damage. Warp's Edge making quite a deep run with both of his teams for how new he is to this scene. Not to mention making a uh, deep run with a Chaos Blade team. As I understand, both of them were pretty rigorously tested. Well, the testing is showing its fruits of the fruits of the labor. Down by the docks, we'll see if uh, Operation Meteor has a little bit better luck this time. Looks like full team haste and uh, can't tell if pro shell. Looks like not. Time Age well, loses his weapon, not that it mattered. What did he even have? He had a Mace of Zeus. Nice damage on the triple flame, hitting basically everybody. But putting down no one. Well, it's okay, he had the follow-up. I want to distribute! Dragon with a follow-up dash. Uh, things are not looking good for no damage this round. Tell you what, Platina Helm doesn't stop dash. <clears throat> nope. Being on a small map and not getting that initial nameless dance really made a difference. Yep, that tends to be one of the uh, biggest problems with teams based around using nameless, is the small maps are... they're rough. Because you almost never manage to get a nameless off before s the initial conflict. Critical hit! Ooh. Down goes the dancer! <laughs> Don't move purified completely by accident. Priest is going to try and pick up the uh, dancer, but... Well, self-destruct. He just takes himself out. But uh, things are not looking great for Warp when the uh, first kill on the enemy team was a self-destruct. Priest Back has a bonk. That one is not a critical hit. Just doing a little bit of damage. re in their haste. Time Age trying to lock him down. Oh, he's, he's fine with staying still if he can pick up a friend. And uh, based on the amount that was going to heal, pretty sure that's that knight. See a sanctuary come out. Haven't seen that one. Here comes full life. House leaving us in suspense, and he's up and immediately goes for blood. But doesn't get it. Well, I mean, he got three drops. I don't. I'm not sure that even broke the skin. Like six is not damage. Yeah, fair enough. That's damage, though. <laughs> and that's damage repaired. Priests, man, they're unkillable. Except when they're not. Don't move in two poisons. Masa Moon to take off the poisons. Wasting the draw outs. Yep. That's one of the uh, odd, for lack of better term, weaknesses of uh, Masamun is the AI loves to remove poison using it and they, you can just burn through your draw outs that way. You can reduce the priority on uh, regen Ooh. and bring poison closer to zero and they'll do that less if ever. Yeah, that's the first time 
I can recall seeing a Defy Pain do nothing that was not being sent over to a mime. Yeah, that was odd. Very weird. Down goes the priest. That's a big, important unit. I don't know if the dancer... No, the dancer has snipes. They don't have a way to pick that up. It's up to the knight to get over and wish if he has it. I don't Instead, think he does. wish for a chaos block, and he's going to get his wish. Another nameless coming out. No, for how rough this looked for no damage at the start, this is turned around significantly. Yeah, you get a chaos proc on a dragon, who'd a thunk? I mean, you mentioned the chaos proc on the dragon, but I think the confusion to self-destruct may have been bigger. It just completely removed one of their units from the fight. I mean, obviously the Chaos Proc did too, but it bought them the time they needed. Because if all four had been up, I'm pretty sure that Priest would have went down a lot faster. Yeah, Priest was in a place where uh, Triple, Triple Flame, Flame would have uh, just murdered. Yeah. Oh, another Proc! Yeah, getting the early don't move on the uh, bomb following up with a Confuse just really mattered. Charging a headshot. You got it. No damage takes the match 2-0. Operation Meteor is out. Up next we have Love Cord Magic versus Fig. Alien Containment versus Bonks from Wish. The Charm Team versus the uh, budget build of last month's winner. Boom. For alien containment, we have Tassoth the Porky with Nose Breath, Sectoid the Archer with Lucky and a Cupid Bow, Item Regenerator, and Move Plus Two, Aquatoid the Mind Flare with Mind Control, and Ethereal the Summoner with Steel Heart, Auto Potion, Move MP Up, and Move Plus One. On the other side, for Bonks from Wish, we have Actual Priest, the Actual Priest, with a Regen Bag, Draw Out, Auto Potion, Move MP Up, and Move HP Up. A just absurdly durable priest. Sage from Wish, the Geomancer, with Draw Out, Counter Flood, Defense Up, and Magic Defend Up. Ninja from Wish, the Squire, with uh, Hamido, Steel, Two Swords, and Move Plus Two, Double Flame Whip with Small Mantle. And Thief from Wish, the Archer, with Steel, Arrow Guard, Concentrate, and Sniper. Large 78 starting us off. Oh yes, this map has the teams a little bit separated, I meaning early buffs are probably going to have to be done twice. Is that a eel being charged on the pig? I have no idea. What is that summoner doing? Yeah, that pig's going to die. I'll just go ahead and just set it up. I'll just go ahead and start healing. There's the Moss Moon. I guess I stand corrected because the two units managed to position themselves perfectly. Yeah, it definitely worked out really well. See a draining poison. Oh, that's big. That Sniper Archer is, uh, unfortunately. Oh, we see haste from Wish. 
yeah, well, the fuck was that, Summoner? You just felt like wasting MP? Temporal Strike, ooh, just destroys that Squire. I'm trying to figure out how that's even possible. Uh, good question, because I was confused by it first, too, but I was like, wait, no, I'm probably thinking of the one that rips re-rays, not, a. Uh... I'm gonna look at that real quick. Yeah, it does 67% of max, but he hadn't taken any damage, had he? Mm, I don't believe so, and, uh, does Tim... Does Sniper work on Temporal or something? Ah, yes, that's probably what it is. It's okay. The Sniper got his revenge. I mean, the uh, Squire got his revenge. Yeah, I, I feel like uh, Sniper working on those skills is kind of unintended. Yeah, I'm going to have to look at where I put Sniper in and if it goes through that procedure or not. Although, no, that still wouldn't one-shot because an extra third on 66% is, uh, like... 19.8 so like even if it was 20% that's still 83 not 100 uh the percentage loss isn't affected by compat is it no compat's the hit yeah, rate nothing. yeah I got nothing then yeah I'm gonna have to like look at what that goes through and figure it out I feel like Sniper has to be a part of it. Wait, can Tempor Temporal Strike can't crit, can it? Nope. And then, yeah, uh, Sniper basically has to be a part of it because we've never seen this before. I have my suspicion about what it is, and I'll check it tonight. Ugh, gonna be so much math, though. Fucking compiler math. Hate it. Meanwhile, Figs bonks from Wish have, ha have a very commanding lead in this round. That is, uh, not a super surprise. The biggest surprise is that they're in the loser's bracket in the first place. Alien Containment has been, uh, lost the first round. Let's see if they can take the second. Yeah, the Squire is a menace, but that's no big surprise. Heck, Fig told everyone exactly what he was running. Kiyomori on four. But it won't be a Masa on four following it up. Priest is out of the range, does not get the haste. Well, let's see if Moss on 3 will be good enough. Ooh, gets a weekend on that summoner. <clears throat> he picks up a haste from Time Blast. No luck with the Steel Heart. Does Time Blast not self-target? as well? It does, it just doesn't have a 100% hit rate. Yeah, I knew it didn't. I was just like, huh. No, potions reverse on undead. Yeah, they do. That unit was not undead, they were weakened. Purple is weakened. You see the piggy take, take a dash, but, uh, Get a sneaking suspicion that Squire's going to do a lot more than 140 to him back. 
Yeah, I'd say that's a pretty good bet. No, he wants the squid. Did I hear that crit on that last one? Conk. Oh. Gusty win for 144. Yeah, that was a predicted 430 damage. Which is, I think, actually more than his max health. Yeah, it is. Makes quick work of the archer, though. But yeah, I'm almost certain I know what it is based on uh, this match and another match where we had a weird damage prediction that didn't make sense. This sh these two share oh, exactly scary. one similarity. Is that similarity that uh, they won the match and it's 2-0? Um, well, now they do, so I don't have to fix it, but I'm pretty sure what it is is Weaken is increasing damage and not decreasing it, because there was a dragon with Weaken that did more than was possible with a crit. But what if it wasn't a crit and it was just Weaken doing an extra 33% instead of reducing it? That that would explain it. I'm a little surprised it's not been caught before this point in the tourney, but hey, stuff like that sneaks through. Well, also, most people are using Nightshade or Deadly Poison. Uh, yeah, fair enough. The Weaken Poison was less common, and usually it kills the thing it hits, so... Yeah, so it gets a little bit harder to actually see it in a uh, play. Yeah. But anyways, uh, break two and cafe one coming up next. Tennessee Titans versus lean on the back foot. For Tennessee Titans, we have Brian Callahan, the <coughs> summoner with draw out, counter magic, defense up and guts. Bri Ryan Tannehill, the monk with item throw, uh, counter throw, equip armor and equip axe. Ran Carthen, the sacred with mimic Titan and Amy Adams, the mime with mimic. For Lean on the Back Foot, we have Shade the Geomancer with Draw Out, Hamido, Defense Up, and <gasps> Maintenance. Spark the Engineer with Item, Throw Item, Arrow Guard, and Equip Shield. Blaze the Sage with Draw Out, Damage Split, Equip Armor, and Magic Defend Up. And Ace the Knight with Basic Skill, Dragon Spirit, Deadshot, and Equip Gun. Large 87. This is unfortunately not a great map for the Tennessee Titans, as they both want to get in and they want uh, to position themselves to use that Mimic Titan. Do get a nice opening haste, though. <clears throat> Which gets repeated just for safety. Both teams. On the back foot follows it. Akiyamori land on three. Does not catch the uh, say. Oh wow, Mime only took one step forward. Yeah, it was one step shy of catching the Sage, and it has him outranged, so it wants to move as like far ranged as possible to hit him next turn, but be out of his Makes range sense. himself. Makes sense. Just kind of lucky on the front of uh, how often we see Mimes run in headlong. Positioning lined up so the Mime didn't just commit a, you know, commit die immediately. Oh! Geo does not commit frog either. See a Mimic Titan to heal up. And the counter magic. I love that. That is a really neat interaction. Why did the Mime not uh, Mimic Titan? Uh, because that is not a mimicable ability. 
it's labeled as it that it is. Ah. Because, At least in the DC. Because it's not checked and it should be. <laughs> yeah, because I figured that was uh, part of the intent of the mine. Well, break, it's supposed to be. At least according to the DC. Yeah, like say that earlier. <laughs> yeah. Mimic Titan. Counter magic's the draw. Uh, where are you, mimicable checkbox? Is that in multiple places? No. Okay. It's one of those things we didn't notice because who ran sacreds before? Well, who ran sacred and a mime? Yeah. Like. It is I definitely mean, the, a brave new world we find ourselves in. Oh, for sure. Uh, the team I ran that went 0-2 in this tourney uh, did run a sacred, but 0-2 and no mine, so. <laughs> the double near fatal. Don't see that happen very often. Barry picks up. Just haste's falling off all over the place. Mermasa death sentence, but guts for the uh, summoner. Brought back up with Nurse Slash, Earth but slash. gets fatigued, so we won't be casting any new magic. But he will be throwing out Masa Moon. Which uh, gets mimicked and. Uh, oh, catches the engineer on the enemy team. Not ideal. Especially when it gets you killed immediately. Maybe Titan to uh, heal up the summoner some more. And put down the knight. Counter magic to get everybody up to full. Not full anymore. Oh, they're lined up for the cheery. Oh no! Oh, they're lined up for the cheery! Man, that was a brutal cheery on cheery. I, I just love that that happened. Yep. Unfortunately, I think that cemented the match very fast. You don't say. <laughs> Game one goes to lean on the back foot. The Mimas have been informed. She's allowed to jump up and down now. Yes, you are in fact allowed to jump. Go ahead and jump. But only up and down really fast. You can't jump up and wait for a while, then come down. There's no Lancers in this match, so you gotta pick. Yeah, no, that was a... Medium, or small 43. That was a brutally intelligent choice from that Sage. Because he didn't even die to both cheers. He yeah, the summoner was left at three. Summoner was left at three. Bull was left at critical. Killed their monk right after they had all healed the full. Well, bulls have enormous HP, so that part makes sense oh, at yeah. least. But the sage who actually started the cheery, who got hit by the second and took his own damage, he lived through the whole set. You see the haste regen on everybody? Is it that he has guts MP switch or magic defense up? Uh, let me check. He has magic defend up. And damage split. But the damage split did not go off. But yeah, he's taking less from his own actually. and from the others. Does that mime have like three brave or something? Um, 50, so may as well be 3 brave. Yep. And unfortunately, because was lined up with that Earth Slash, just kind of, you know, got bop. Moss Moon to pick everybody's health up. Oh, 
Oh, gunshot puts the summoner into critical. I think this Geo's gonna try and finish him. With an Asura. Ooh, I think that was a Guts proc. Yeah, there's no way that does that little. Mimic Titan to pick up his summoner friend and do some solid damage, which gets counter magic to repeat the process. But the mime's on the floor, so no, uh... No mimics yeah, there. Yeah, we'll wait on this fairy. Okay, she's gonna finish it off. Oh, never mind. That's right. She won't turn. She'll just uh, hit the ground. <laughs> In both ways. In both ways. Ooh. That monk is feeling that bullet in his shoulder. Summoner's gonna try and put this Geo down. Did that Geo just take no damage from using Muramasa? He was at 48 before. Did who? The Geomancer. Because he was at 48, he used Muramasa. I was like, oh, then he's probably going to die to it because he saw himself die. Well, the Titan hits him now. Because he doesn't have anything that should prevent that death, I don't think. Uh... How much damage is it supposed to do? I'd have to look. But he's got 15 MA. Surely more than 48. I think it's MA times 3. I think it did 45 and took him to 3. Oh, yeah. That would, that would explain it. So... Because we know it doesn't echo because of some of the effect issues. Yeah, it's MA times 3. So, yeah. It had been 45, so he just barely lived through it. So that explains it. I was just kind of confused for a second. One of those things where the since the samurai uh, self-damage doesn't pop up, it's easy to question it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Going down to a bull and a summoner. Can see titans are trying to hold on. But currently, Cafe has them on the back foot. Titan puts down both his feet. Uh, Moogle misses because of the Titan moving. And I think the Titan's about to go down. Sure Indeed. does. And a uh, 5 MP summoner is all that's left. Well, I at least feel better that the... Uh... <laughs> The winning team is the one that knocked both of my teams out in the last two streams. Quite fitting that Lean on the back foot loses in round one to go to the loser's bracket and progresses through the rest of the tournament on the back foot. Oh yeah, so let's aim at the uh, top of the mast. Down it, it goes. Is. Tennessee Titans are eliminated. Lean on the back foot advances 2-0. And up last for tonight, we have Coplo 1 versus Ludo. Evil Destruction strikes back versus Sardek bullied me into making a team. Either way, one of these players will be out of the tournament. These are the last teams for both of them. For Evil Destruction Strikes Back, we have Necromancer the Geomancer with Draw Out, Counter Flood, Magic Attack Up, and Magic Defend Up. White Witch the Priest with Draw Out, Damage Split, Defense Up, and Move Plus One. Arrow the Archer with Item, Arrow Guard, Deadshot, and Sniper. And Punisher the Squire with Steel, Auto Potion, Attack Up, and Maintenance. 
On the other side for Ludo, we have Teasing the Mediator. Draw out Auto Potion, Magic Attack up, move plus one. Hitting the Taiju with Spirit of Life proved to be critical last stream. Poking the Lancer with Steel, Hamido, jump plus two and move HP up. And then Frogging the Priest. Really just the, the team's heart and soul right here. With Planar Magic, Counter Magic, Defense Up, and Teleport. <coughs> and of course, a Faith Rod. Large 85 to start. Faith Rod to get the Infrogging going. Oh, okay. That's much better. Just popped my knee. It had been like tense oh, all that day. Pressure. Yeah, I've been there. So let's see if uh, the team that Sardek bullied Ludo into making can uh, continue on. Well, Ludo does not seem to think so. I mean, Cup is a strong contender, so... Ludo has historically done reasonably well, but obviously Coppola has always done well just towards the top. Yeah. As a four-time champion, not anyone to expect poor results from. To uh, answer your question, Ludo, hi, I'm Soul. Hi. I think you... I think I joined just as you stopped, or I joined just after you stopped, actually. Yeah, less to check I'm not the four-time WWE champion, but hey, we like to believe. So weird that we see the uh, extra dam the self-damage on counter magic, but not on the initial casting. I'm, yeah, that's really strange. I have no idea why that's the case. I'm going to, like, mention that in the uh, Hactics Discord. Like, oh, also, this this also happens. And they're just going to be like, why? How? What? Clearly, it's because the draw user understands their abilities better and can hide the cut on their hand. Countering it, though, is, you know, they don't know what they're doing. Just... Asura everywhere. If only there was an arm in there to counter magic a third time. God. I don't think reactions can trigger other reactions, but the initial can no, trigger but, two reactions. Yeah, the initial can Yeah, exactly. The initial can trigger two counter magics. Just a giant scrum in the middle there. Then could have a mime there, too, for a fourth one. Oh, it's... speaking of the scrum in the middle, here comes Frog 2. Oh. Well, you know, there came Frog 2. Huge magic spirit, huge healing. Oh, here comes a cheery. Do we see a counter Doesn't magic? We sure do. Oh, no. Counter magic to kill herself. Unfortunate. Yeah, I'd be talking smack to him after that, too. Down goes the Lancer. Down goes the Mediator, it is just the tree. Yeah, Counter Flood's still good, just not as good as it once was. I mean, kind of hard to beat free instant KOs on your enemy's turn. So uh, that, had to, that aspect had to be deftly removed. Spirit of Life picks her up, she goes for a death sentence. Lands uh, it. That's okay, two so death landed. or no, just one. So you got the death sentence. In three turns, that squire will be dead. What's your plan to make it to that third turn? 
I'm guessing Spirit of Life from the tree. Okay, so tree moves over into the corner. Spirit of Life's the mediator. And then moves back so the mediator's up and body blocking. Yeah, and then moves back up and gets the priest and the lancer in the future turn. Also, trees are just beefy in general. Yeah, that's true. Oh, no, they're going the other way. Running away, like, that's going to be two crystals. That's probably going to seal it. Because if oh, the tree sure. could go it... get them back, like, this would be an actual plausible match, but... Yeah. It's unfortunate because Spirit of Life is one of, I think, two... I think there's only two AoE revives in the game. It's Spirit of Life and Fairy. And that's really powerful. Just unfortunately, the tree does not see that option. Then she'd be running into the entire enemy team to do it, so... She's going to heal and run away. Her plan is now to, uh... You know, just heal herself repetitively and damage split the entire enemy team to death. I don't think that is going to be effective. I didn't say it was a good strategy. In fairness, you know, trees usually don't run around either, so like, they figured out the strategy of I'll just stand here and grow, and it works pretty well for them. But, uh, just standing there and healing yourself isn't going to work out this time, friend. Oh, so she goes for the offense. And gets damn split herself. Taste of her own medicine. Tree and the priest sitting there, Spider-Man meme. <laughs> one of my favorite things about Marvel Snap is that that's one of the uh, default emojis, is Spider-Man pointing. That works pretty well in a card game, because, uh... Pretty common in a card game, you're going to run up against your own deck if you're playing something meta. Yep. Speaking of the meta, there's the uh, new thief ability, putting the tree down. Game one to evil destruction strikes back. Let's see if uh, Ludo's team can pull it out this time, or if they're going to have to leap. Mm. Well, opening Cheery, which uh, doesn't get counter magic. Oh, she just died. It's Woo! That, you know what? You dying there probably was a good thing. Yeah, least. probably saved the team. Probably just saved that Lancer's life. Or not. For the moment. Yeah, I mean, saved it momentarily. So she saved the Mediator from taking a shot. Okay. Walk up, Spirit of Life. Okay, well, that was a choice. Actually, probably a decently good choice. Yeah, that, that was all right. Because, like, they're not going to crystallize immediately. It's got another turn to go for it, and that sidelines the Geomancer for a turn. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't, because of Cure. And the concern is that that meant that both of them missed a turn, that Priest missed two turns. Uh, damage split gets most of that back. Okay. Death Sentence on the Squire misses. Spirit of Life. There we go. Yeah. Uh, the self-damage probably happened break, it just doesn't show. For, that's what we were talking about earlier, was that when a user does draw out, it will not show the self-damage. But if that draw out is counter magic, it will show the self-damage as a part of the counter magic. Which is super weird. Super weird. L. Ivy puts down the Lancer. It's down to a lone tree again. Yeah, it looks like Evil Destruction two. just has too much damage Ooh, too fast. doesn't kill. 
Uh, no, that does not include Cheery, actually. Because Cheery's da self damage formula is different. And I know we've seen Cheery's self damage happen. Well, Cheery doesn't have self damage, it, yeah, it doesn't have just self -damage, hits just yourself. You yourself. Right. Yeah. You are also a target of this ability. Yeah. Yeah, so no additional, just you hit yourself. Yep. Regardless, Evil Destruction strikes back, continues on 2-0. And then there were eight. Congratulations to our top eight players. Kajada's one and two. Warped Edge is one and two. Simmon, Fig, Cafe One, and Kapla One. All eight of them will be playing again. To, um, I think I'm going to take tomorrow off. Uh, I don't know. I'll let you guys know in the channel when I wake up tomorrow what we're looking at. Because there are only two more streams and four days to do them. So I'm going to see just based on how things line up. Clearly we're going to stream for the next two days and then have a postseason. <laughs> well, wife's having her wisdom teeth taken out in the morning, so I don't know how much like uh, attention she's going to need over the next several days. Fair, fair. Makes sense. So I'm just going to kind of play it by ear, so I will let you guys know what is up uh, tomorrow afternoon. So stay tuned for the, uh, the ping to be told what is going on. But until then, I've been Sardek. And I've been Sol. See y'all around. Have a good one.